Worcesterton Junior School in Crewe has always been keen to encourage PE within its curriculum. However, since the introduction of the school sports partnership, the range of activities available to the pupils has increased dramatically. The activities on offer at the school are many and varied, including tennis, football, golf, basketball, dance, skipping, girls football, gymnastics, athletics, carpet bowls. We started uh, getting involved with the Skills Sport Partnership uh, nearly three years ago now. Um, the main uh, differences is made really in the teaching. We've also been able to work with the other schools in the area, sharing expertise, sharing their resources. The children uh, have also been able to take part in a whole uh, range of activities that previously they couldn't. One of the real pluses with the school sport partnership is it's allowed us to give a little bit more time and attention to those children who perhaps previously hadn't always enjoyed their peer by offering um, slightly more proficient um, teaching during class times. We're finding that the, the feedback from parents is very, very positive and that the children are, are enjoying sports uh, a, as I say, a lot more than previously. Pupils can also take part in the Golden Mile, an additional activity available at lunch times. Uh, the Golden Mile is predominantly a health and fitness scheme to get children uh, uh, in the primary school age to get them fit and get them healthy throughout their school years. Uh, the scheme is basically there to uh, uh, get the children to walk, jog or run 50 miles in their school year. OK, when we get to the cone again we're going to start jogging, we can start on our Golden Mile once we get to the cone. The Golden Mile scheme is broken down into, into three areas, it's 10 miles, 25 miles and 50 miles and the children can uh, they get uh, certificates at 10 miles, and at 25 miles, and at 50 miles, that's what it's there for. As well as the established games on offer, the pupils at Wisterston are also encouraged to invent new games. Um, at the moment we're doing PE, and in it we get doing games, and we have to make up a game with four cones, a bat and a ball. Well, I basically like making the games like, when we do the games, because it's a bit more fun having to stick by the original rules. Fizz Kids was introduced um, with the Sports part Partnership uh, nearly three years ago now. Uh, and basically what happens is um, Shamden High School train uh, about 32 of our children uh, to take part uh, as Fizz Kids leaders, basically focusing on all sorts of uh, playtime games to try and keep the year, uh, uh, Key Stage 1 children just a little bit more active during their lunchtime periods. So as a play leader, which you, you will be when you finish your training, how could you change the game so to make it that the fox gets lots of tails and feels good about themselves? Yeah. I'm a PE teacher at Shavington High School. I'm also a school sport coordinator, uh, working with lots of local primary schools. But one of my new initiatives is um, to help Year 5 and 6 children to be uh, play leaders, working with the mid midday assistants on the, on the Fizz Kids scheme, which is to get um, infants and Year 1 children more active at lunch times. <laughs> First we had two weeks training and then we came over with Mr Sharples, our trainer, for a session with the kids and then we, Mr Sharples came over again with us to um, give us a test on being a Fizz Kids and we all passed. We get a badge here and we've got a certificate each. Being a Fizz Kids involves for you to do a lot of stuff with the kids, make sure they're very safe, playing safely and make sure they're having fun. And most of the time, we're having fun at the same time. We love the Fizz Kids! It's not only the Fizz Kids that are given responsibilities at playtime. The school council also has an important role to play. One of the things that we're very keen at is keeping the children uh, very busy, very active at playtimes. Uh, through the school council, really, we've also purchased a whole variety of, of smaller games, things like hand tennis bats, uh, reaction balls, uh, wooden skis. The school council basically have a fixed budget each year, um, and they look through various catalogues to decide which items they think will be the most durable and, of course, the most Fun. We're a school council and um, we get suggestions from the people in our classes and when we meet up um, 
about once a month. We give in suggestions and Mr Prince tries uh, tries to get them. These are reaction balls when you bounce them. They all like bounce anywhere and you have to try and catch them. Well, we've had a number of questionnaires that have uh, been completed by the children. One of the things that um, they'd written in the early questionnaires uh, last year was that they wanted uh, more things to be doing at playtime and uh, to be kept busier, and largely as a result of, of what the, the school council had fed back to us. You put the ball in one of them, and then you have to try and um, put your feet on there, and you bounce it to try and get it in the middle. It's like a maze. As far as the after school um, clubs are concerned, uh, a number of them are run by uh, the class teachers uh, and some of them are, are run by outside specialists who come in. Some of the more unusual ones are things like the carpet bowls. Carpet bowls is run jointly by one of the class teachers and a retired caretaker and he arranges various tournaments and competitions for the, for the year six pupils. I set up this this doubles competition at the beginning of the season, which starts in September, and then run what we call target bowls. It's called a mini league. This is the short mat indoor bowls with a spinner in the middle, and you have to get round it. You try, there's like circles, and you roll it and try and hit the. Jack. 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 Jack is where he's at. Yeah. 100 points in the mini. Yeah. Oh, in the um, double competition thing, um, you get one point for hitting the Jack as well. I like everything about golf. It's just fun. I'm not a teacher at the school, I'm a parent, I've got my own children at the school. I work with the children of the girls' football team and I also help out with the athletics. We started off with perhaps four or five girls, it's moved on to 15 or 16 that you see today. So I want the first two in each team to come and stand here. Girls' reactions are fantastic. It's great to see at playtimes, at lunchtimes, that the girls are actually playing football now. They're coming out with the boys and they want to join in, they want to join in the games. It's great that it's just accepted now and it's, it's encouraged. Wisterston has its own budding golf champion. Lewis is a pupil at the school and is off to America later this year to take part in a golf tournament. Lewis also helps out in the after-school golf club. Well, I've come here tonight to teach all these kids who, who are interested in golf, so maybe one day they could become professional golfers. It's sort of like a nice peaceful game because it's not like football where you get all shouting and you have to do it in a matter of time. You can take a time all you like. Wisterston is embracing the positive attitude to health and fitness wholeheartedly with an added incentive for the pupils, a healthy week. Basically what we wanted to do was have one week where uh, the children uh, got involved with one or two uh, of the more unusual activities. So one of the things we got involved with are skipping workshops uh, whereby instructors will be working with the children. The whole school will actually observe the, uh, the final display. At the moment we're trying to work within each school to promote um, health and fitness via skipping. And we also do a lot of work with midday supervisors to enhance really playgrounds more and more structured play and also to um, increase or improve behavioural problems within the playground as well. As part of the Year 6 uh, curriculum we're also looking at uh, bacteria and how we look after ourselves and our bodies so we invited uh, an environmental health officer to work with the children um, studying ba how bacteria builds up on hands and all sorts of uh, interesting things like that. Let's rub your palms together and the backs of your hands, remember that bit? Lovely. Now we're going to check that your hands are glowing all nice and properly. Right. So that's everything that you've got to wash off now, OK? Uh, we've also got an Olympic meal, which um, our catering staff are putting together for Thursday, which is coinciding with the, uh, the start of the Winter Olympics. Today we're having a Healthy Options Day, a uh, Winter Olympics themed lunch, and it's all part of the 
um, thing that they're doing in school of Healthy Week this week. We've got 184 children having lunch today. As it's a special themed lunch, we've themed the menu as well, so it all helps with um, the health of the school and the children that are having school meals. And as well as the uh, Olympic meal, we've also got a Healthy Disco. So uh, the Healthy Disco is being organised by the PTA. Um, basically, it'll involve, rather than having um, snacks of sweets and uh, various goodies like that, there'll be cucumbers and melons and carrot sticks and flavoured water um, and uh, as much loud music as possible. So uh, that's a, a, quite a nice end to the week, we hope. It isn't just the children who benefit from the school sports partnership. Teachers also gain from the scheme. PPA uh, was introduced in September 2005, whereby uh, all class teachers uh, have 10% non-contact time for planning, preparing and assessing uh, the children's learning. Uh, now, during that time, uh, the governors of the school decided that the children um, should benefit by uh, enjoying a whole spectrum of different activity. But what we had Ed is a gymnast who comes in uh, and the gymnast every week works with the children in years three uh, and five and six. We go out to the schools to cover schools programmes and PPA time for the teachers. We basically try to cover a range of gymnastic classes um, that fit in with the national curriculum. Aside from the PPA time, teachers also benefit from sports specialists coming into the school. In my session I'm primarily here to actually teach the teacher so therefore I make sure that the children are enjoying themselves but that the teacher is actually learning something from it whether it's terminology of gymnastics or how to coach the gymnastics that's what I'm primarily here for. Over six weeks there's a, an expert gym teacher that's come in and every other week she's teaching a lesson. The lessons that I'm not teaching I'm observing her uh, demonstrating her skills and how to interact with the children and how to get them to build up different movements within gymnastics that they can learn. And if you do it in school, I can see the actual theory being put into practice. And if I went on a course, then I'd just be, I'd just be talking about things and I wouldn't be able to see how you're meant to interact with the children and how you can build up the different activities stage by stage. So watching it happening is, is much more beneficial than just talking about it. By keeping the children far more active at play times and by engaging in two hours of real quality PE, uh, the children are, are returning to the classroom in a, in a very purposeful, uh, workmanlike uh, manner. And uh, as I say, the actual pace um, and energy that they're able to devote and concentration levels in the classroom, uh, we have noticed uh, you know, a very pleasing difference. We can do our times tables standing on our heads. I mean, everybody's heard the phrase healthy mind, healthy body, but why not put that in reverse and you've got healthy body, healthy mind. The coordination in the body can always help the coordination in the mind. It definitely helps in the classroom. I think uh, physical activity absolutely is 100% brilliant for children's concentration, for, for basically everything that a children involves in that. So by getting fitter, yes, your concentration level does improve. So not only is your physical ability improving, your academic level improves as well. The strong ethos for sport and the range of activities available at Wisterston means the future, in terms of fitness for the pupils, looks a healthy one.